Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lee Mission Yannigans of 1977. It's Friday night, and you know what that means. It's time for your WWE SmackDown and NXT Level Up Event Center Wrestling Report. And now here's the man to give you that report, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode a very clean machine against 1977 episode 1689 of the show. And how's it going, everybody? Um, we're going to be uh, talking about what happened last night on SmackDown. And the two NXT, NXT level ups didn't report on last week's NXT level up, so I got that. And also, this week's level up. I decided to watch it, but didn't want to um, didn't want to stay up late because it was work day this morning and everything else in between. It was a rainy, crazy day, but in the end. Survived that home and gonna be relaxing for the weekend. I got um, stuff to do this weekend, and I'll tell you one thing, man. Uh, <clears throat> when it's a good time, I will tell everybody what is going to happen um, tomorrow. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, something special is happening tomorrow um, after church. So, um, I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about that when the time is right. But right now, let's get it. <clears throat> let's uh, let's talk about this. Um, talk about what happened on SmackDown. Um, where are we here? Okay, here we go. And uh, the Bloodline. Um, in fact, Roman Reigns and uh, Cody Rhodes were about to, to meet up at a football field in Georgia Tech, uh, where Roman Reigns played, and Atlanta is his home. So <clears throat> they got a lot to discuss there. And uh, Jacob fought, and the Bloodline was getting checked by security. Jacob fought too when they tried to give him a pat down. He started beating everybody up there. What is wrong with Jacob fought too? I mean, uh, so he clobbered somebody there. I think it's in Sacramento. So <laughs> before the show started, and uh, the United States title on the line. Uh, L.A. Knight versus Andrade, who won that right to the uh, number one contender to the title, and heck of a matchup. Andra L.A. Knight defeated Andrade. And then Tiffany Stratton talks to Nia Jax. And, uh, and Nia Jax warned her that if uh, she gets pinned, she better be thinking about leaving leaving SmackDown. <laughs> of course, you can you, you can um, cash in on Liv Morgan if you want to. Remember, you can she can cash that money in the bank um, briefcase on anybody, on either Nia Jax or Liv Morgan. So that's something. You know, if she catches on Liv Morgan, I'll throw a monkey wrench into uh, Ray Ripley's plan, and that probably would, you know, probably want to see Ray Ripley Tiffany Stratton matchup. You know, because both went Lim and R are, are uh, almost the same in height, but also very athletic. So who knows for sure what's going to happen in that situation if that rises? But right now, Tiffany Stratton's holding on to that money in the bank. Carmella Hayes was trash talking Andrade in the back after he lost, and then both men decided to brawl. Guess what? Before the referees decide to break it up, guess what? That leads to part six of the saga of Andrade and Carmelo Hayes. You know, Roman Reigns and, Co and Cody Rhodes face to face, and uh, Rhodes kind of um, and Roman Reigns says, "I got nothing to lose. They took the wise men away from me. They took uh, Jimmy away from me. I got nobody, and I got nothing to lose." But then he said, and "Cody Rhodes kind of like saw through him." But then, but Roman Reigns did admit it, that when it's all said and done, he'll be coming back for the championship. <clears throat> so, a little tense moment in the, uh, a little tense moment between Cody Rhodes, you know, he says, I'll give you my word, I got your back. And Cody goes, I'll give you my word, I got your back. So, but then uh, Kevin Owens was watching the whole thing, uh, was interviewed by Brian Saxton, but Kevin Owens said nothing and walked away. Apollo Crews went one on one with Giovanni Vinci, and this time around, a match actually happened. And then I think Giovanni Vinci got a little bit too arrogant, and once again, Apollo Crews pinned him, <clears throat> pinned him after, pinned him to win another matchup. But then Giovanni Vinci attacking Apollo Crews after the match. Brian Saxton tries again to uh, interview Owens, and Owens says, "You know what?" I'm going out there to the ring and say it. So Kevin Owens comes out, goes out to the ring, dresses Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns and Co 
and Cody Rhodes about their confrontation. Then uh, the bloodline once again interrupts Owens. And why does the heck the Tama Tonga sound like a Samoan version of Beavis? You know, you know, yeah. If, if, if Tama Tonga is Beavis, and you got and then Tonga Lo is Butthead. You know, the Samoan version of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> the Tama Tonga. Like, yes, what, what the heck is that? You know, yes, 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 yes. the heck is that? I mean, dude, come on, speak English. <laughs> Do we, do we need prayer or something? <laughs> Tama Tonga. Dude cracks me up. And then Tonga, uh, then they present to, they decide, decide to proceed to attack Owens, and then D, DIY helps them. Nick Aldis goes, you know what, I'm getting sick of this. You guys start something, and you know what? We see three of you there. We see three of them here. Tonight, main event, six-man tag. DIY and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline. And then... Bailey and Nomi were in the locker room talking about their matchup. It says, well, we'll worry about the matchup. Don't worry about who's going to pin who and all that. And then uh, and then Naomi and Bailey team up against Nick, uh, Nia Jackson, Tiffany Stratton. But here's the crazy part. Now, you, if, now, whoever pins Nia Jax will get a shot at the title at Bad Blood. However, if either Bailey and Nomi get pinned, they lose. they leave SmackDown. So, they both pinned Nia Jax to win this, to win the tag team matchup. So, it makes it interesting. And then, they had Chelsea Green training for the dumpster match against Mi Chin. And Michael Cole is pretty excited to see uh, Chelsea Green being put in a dumpster. Now, if you don't know what a dumpster match is, it's the same thing as a casket match. If you get thrown in the dumpster, close the lid, you win the match. You know, on your opponent, you win the match. Just make sure your opponent is in the dumpster. So you got that. That's all you gotta do, Chelsea. It's like the, it's like the casket match. You know, it's like it's like a street version of the casket match. You know, throw your opponent inside the dumpster and close the lid, and you win. That's all you gotta do. Simple as that, right? And of course, Michael Cole's pretty excited about. It. He says he can't wait to see Chelsea Green put in the dumpster to trash. And Chelsea Green responded, "I don't like you, Michael Cole." Oh boy, this is gonna be so much fun. And then Bailey and Naomi were arguing uh, about who should be the number one contender. And then Nick Aldis goes, "Got a solution, ladies. Next week, you two go on one on one. Winner faces Nia Jax in Bad Blood. No problem there." And um, then the six man tag: Kevin Owens and DIY versus the Bloodline. No match. Why? Because the Bloodline decided to get to DIY before they even hit the ring. And Kevin Owens kind of knew this was going to this was going to happen, so he went after, um, went after they uh, he went after the Bloodline. They attacked KO, and then the Street Profits got involved. And then during the break, Nicola says, well, "Okay, DIY can't go. Street Profits, you take their place." And uh, and it got so bad, the brawl ended up being a no contest, and both teams continued to brawl. DIY comes out to fight the Bloodline. Rhodes comes back with a chair to fight the Bloodline, but then. Kevin Owens picked up a chair, thought he was going to attack Cody Rhodes, and then they both hug it out at the end. So, so that is the end of SmackDown. All right, we're talking about Level Up this past Friday, um, last week, Friday the 13th, as Shiloh Hill and Cutler James took on the TV Uriah Connors and Kale Dixon with Hill, Hill and James winning the matchup. And Kendall Gray um, talked to Carly Bright about, about Kendall Gray's matchup against... Tyra May Steele, as you know, former Olympic gold medalist, an uh, uh, Olympic gold medalist, and being very tough. And uh, Kendall, so they went one on one, Tyra May Steele and, Ken, and Kendall Gray. And Gray ended up picking up the victory in that matchup. Shara Schreiber interviewed a newcomer, Nico Vance. And Nico Vance sounds a little cold hearted. And uh, he took on the uh, D'Angelo family's Luca Crucifino. And Crucifino took pick up the victory over Nico Vance. So congratulations to Luca Crucifino. Now we're going to go to th- last night's uh, NXT level up. Lash Legend took on Laney Reed, and Lash Legend picked up the victory over Laney Reed. Sarah Schreiber interviews Callie Armstrong as she's getting ready to take on Brindley Reese, and they the two had their matchup and. Uh, Brindley Reese did pick up the victory 
over over Callie Armstrong, the newcomer. Cutler James talks to Shiloh Hill about Mark Coffey, and Shiloh Hill took on Mark Coffey, and Shiloh Hill's inexperience in the ring cost him in the end as Mark Coffey did pick up the victory over the rookie newcomer. Well, that is all the time we have on the show. As you know, um, two weeks from the day is Bad Blood, the pay-per-view. Really excited about that, and we will, and we shall see what it will happen in the end. We'll see what will happen this coming Monday night on Raw. The Intercontinental Title will be on the line. Jay Uso to challenge Braun Breaker. This will be an interesting matchup. I'm sure that will be the main event. And what's the Judgment Day going to do? So we shall see. Looks like I got sideburns back. <laughs> Looks like I have sideburns again. I miss the days when I used to grow sideburns like The Rock did back in the day. Anyways. Uh, thank you for tuning in to episode 1,689 of Eric Lee Machine Against 1977, the SmackDown NXT Level Up Event Center for the 20th of September, uh, 2004. On the next episode, we're going to talk about what happened on AEW Rampage, the final Rampage before Grand Slam this Wednesday. So, uh, goodbye for now, and until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, door for Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Ball for Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.